Definitely let me know. Uh, my name is Tammy Seal. I'm with PMC, the consultant to the city for the general plan update. And we're excited to have you here tonight for the general plan advisory committee, your second meeting. We want to make sure as we get started that we all have the materials we need. I believe Mary Beth passed out the one handout that you were not emailed, which is uh, uh, we're gonna worksheet we're gonna use tonight. So it was a color version you all should have received. And I believe otherwise you guys all got uh, agenda <coughs> and attachments by email and there's extra copies in the back if you need any. So I'm going to be here tonight to facilitate us through the agenda. And just a couple housekeeping items. The restrooms are right outside the door to the right. We right now do not have a break scheduled into the agenda, so please feel free to come and go as you need to. Uh, there's refreshments in the back of the room. We do ask that you silence your cell phones and if you need to take any calls, you can give those out in the hallway. Okay, so we have an agenda that will take us to 8.30 tonight. And I'd like to uh, introduce Mary Beth with the city so that you can make any opening remarks and then we'll do introductions <coughs> after Mary Beth. Okay. Um, Hello everyone again, thank you for um, coming to the second um, GPAC meeting. Um, my name is Mary Beth and I work in the planning division and project manager for this general plan update. Um, we're going to go ahead and do introductions, but I, I wanted to um, make a note. Um, if you haven't already noticed, um, there's a camera set up and um, someone has decided to film um, this meeting. And uh, we just learned of this um, right now, and um, it's not something that we're doing as part of our project. And if you have any questions, you can ask the gentleman who is doing the filming. And um, that is uh, what that is there for. Um, and with that, I think we'll go ahead and do introductions. We'll see you later. And can you just let us know if you're, if you're here representing an organization, you know, many of you are representing a city commission or you're appointed by a council member and you also happen to be on the you could just let us know that. Okay, so my name is Jessica Bechtold. I'm on the environmental board. I'm a member of Search Writer and I was appointed by Joe Hardy. Okay, there we go. Uh, Jeff Kaufman, I'm the chair of the environmental board. Small business owner coming to the Hi, Dick Carlo. Um, so, and he's appointed by Joe Cartio. And I'm Kim Carr. I serve on the Public Works Commission, and I have two kids here. And I've uh, been here for 17 years. My name's Dan Kelman. I was appointed by Joe Shaw, but I'm also on the Pension Commission. John Ventimiglia, a long-time resident. I'm here uh, for the Clinton Bowen. My name is Pat Brandon. I have a company in town called Home Run Media Group. I um, serve on public works, appointed by Matt Harper, so I'm a lame duck at this point. Since he was, uh, got to the primary last night. And I also serve on the board of the Chamber of Commerce. I'm Mike Adams. I'm a planning consultant. 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 I'm a planning and I also am a business owner and I'm on the investment advisory board for the city as well. Steve Engel, and I'm an alternate uh, headed by Joe Shaw. Roy Miller, uh, Community Services Commission, representing him because when they were voting, I went to the restroom. I'm Mark Frisbee, I serve on the planning commission, and I'm representing. I'm Rob Sternberg. I'm appointed by Jim Catapultis. I'm a long-term resident of Huntington Beach and also on the investment advisory board. And I, again, I'm Tammy Seal with TMC, the consultant for the city. And I'm Jeff Henderson, the consultant team project manager for TMC. And Terrence, appointed by Dave Sullivan. Al Walls, a long-time resident as well. And uh, I'll do it for the next one. Juan Dominguez, surfer. <laughs> Jennifer, I work in the funding and building department for the city and the project. We had one 
Uh, Eric Peterson, uh, Chair of the Planning Commission, and Matt Harper is on it. Now can go to the wall. Uh, Greg Griffin, uh, I was asked to attend by the Bulls of Chief Conservancy, Greg Sanders, Director. I'm Barbara Gill Blaze, and I actually serve on the uh, Sustainability Committee um, just here to observe. My name's Ron Higby. I'm the president of Surf City T, and I'm here as an observer. Uh, Mike Hoskinson, a uh, longtime resident. And I ask, who is the filmer and, and why we filmed it? Well, because it's a public meeting that's affecting all the entire city, and uh, I just learned about this meeting today. And I'm sure they're, I'm, I'm on the board of the uh, Facebook page. There's 900 citizens that are very curious what everybody's doing here, and they want to know. So we'll be filming it and posting it to them. I'm sorry, the board of what? The Facebook. There's a Facebook page for Huntington Beach. There's 900 members on it that are all very curious about what everybody's doing here. Thank you. Okay. Okay, uh, are there any public comments at this time? Any additional public comments? With that, we can get into our meeting. I think Meredith, you're up first for a general update. Okay, uh, so we, so we, um, as you know from uh, last time uh, when we met, um, we've been conducting um, a number of outreach efforts um, all had received an email which was kind of summarizing them. But to briefly go over, um, you know, the City Council approved this project back in November. Um, we, had, we have a project website that's been up and running um, since, I guess, February. We've held uh, two visioning workshops at the library. We were at the uh, Eastbury Company Kiwanis sponsored and um, had a workshop there. We also had a kickoff bonfire. Um, on our website, we have an online survey um, as another vehicle for people to provide input. People can also register their email and provide comments. Um, the task forces, most of the, well, many of the task forces have already met. Um, the sustainability task force has met once. The sea level rise task force has met once. Um, this is your second meeting. We've also had a uh, first meeting with the Biological Resources Task Force. We've set second meetings for the Sustainability Task Force and for the Bioresources Task Force, and we'll be having a second meeting with our Sea Level Rise Task Force uh, in this summer. Uh, so where we are in terms of the staff work, um, besides that you, know, you don't see this in our offices, is we're basically in the um, data collection mode. And our consultant is um, doing what's called a technical background report. The technical background reports are the, the underpinning of the general plan. You want to establish what your existing conditions are, whether they be how many housing units you have, um, what your water demands are, uh, how many um, trips uh, vehicles are taking on your streets. You establish what your existing foundation is before you, um, and your vision, which is what we're going to discuss tonight, and then from there, we, we go on to looking at issues, we look at policies to achieve the vision, to address the issues, and ultimately that gets um, put into the general plan document. And as you know, um, this is a, uh, a long project, and we're um, slated to um, conclude it sometime in 2016. We're hopeful that it'll be concluded in summer of 2016. Uh, at the end of the summer, um, in the beginning of the fall, we'll start our second phase of outreach, which is going to be some additional workshops that will be um, popping up in different parts of the community, in addition to other outreaches. Um, I should mention we had done a flyer that went in everybody's utility bill, whether it was electronic or hard copy. Uh, that went out in March. February through March. Yeah, February through March. And that told everybody about what we were doing. It had our website on it. Um, and we had people coming up to us and thanking us for this. We know people actually, some people look at what's in their new video. <laughs> um, so we've tried lots of different avenues to get the word out, to reach people who might not otherwise um, know what a general plan is, and we'll continue to do that. Um, and are always open to any ideas that you all have 
for you. Um, and with that, I think just to keep us on track, I'll, I'll conclude unless you have a question about status and where we are. Great. So the, the next part of the, uh, the agenda, we're going to have a presentation from Jeff. Actually, we're going to have two presentations tonight. And each presentation uh, will offer an opportunity for discussion and question and answers afterwards. But would you prefer that we hold the questions until the end of your presentation? Thank you. So the first of our presentations tonight, and again, the, the, the larger objective for this meeting is for us to report back to the GPAC on the outreach process so far and the things that we've heard in that process, the types of activities we've done, the things that we've heard, and then take those and connect them to the draft vision book that's been produced that provides a community vision as a foundation for the general plan update, as well as 10 guiding principles that address different topics that would come up in the general plan update and provide a real framework for us to kind of start building on as we're assembling the goals, policies, and programs that ultimately comprise the plan. So the first part of our presentation this evening is on the community engagement process that we've conducted thus far. And that starts with a consideration of how we use that input and where it goes in this process. So we've had this process that Mary Beth has previously described, the various different ways that we've collected community input. We've identified from that a number of key themes that we reviewed at the last meeting and have been a basis then for the creation of the guiding principles. We've crafted the community vision and the guiding principles, and we're now in the process of essentially confirming that. So really, the input that we've received to this point Field is representative of the community. There's been more than 500 people that, in one way or another, have engaged in this process. And we've essentially assembled that information and now presented it in the form of a vision and guiding principles. We're in the process now of confirming that information, beginning at the GPAC and then ultimately going to the Planning Commission and the City Council. So, the primary information gathering exercises that we've conducted including helping participants in a variety of different settings to find the things that they cherish about the community. What is it that's doing really well at Huntington Beach? What is it that is attractive about the community for residents, visitors, and businesses? And the things that they see as opportunity challenges, the things that the city's really going to grapple with and struggle with over the next 20 to 30 years. And the way that we've expressed that in the vision statement is through hypothetical news headlines. And this was an activity we conducted in the vision and workshops was to help people sort of first define those things to cherish the issues and the opportunities and then take that material and express it as it would be in a newspaper in 24 describing the community that exists today when you compare it back to the community that existed in 2014. We engaged in a variety of different activities beginning with the stakeholder interviews that we discussed in the last meeting and then since that time at the beach bonfire kickoff on March 19th, two community vision workshops on the 27th and 29th of March. Uh, city staff facilitated a pop-up workshop at the annual Easter egg hunt on April 9th. We've had an online survey that's been ongoing since roughly the end of March, and a bunch of other activities that Mary Beth previously mentioned. The website's been very active, the water bill insert that she mentioned, the banner over Main Street advertising the program and an article in the HP Independent. So, as mentioned previously, in that process, we have touched or engaged more than 500 different community members. Some of the results, some of the things that we've heard so far, on the first answer to that question, what do you cherish about hunting creation? This is material that's summarized in the phase one engagement uh, document that you received prior to the meeting, but we wanted to get some of these high points because we feel that they're connected in many ways to the things that are emerging in the vision. First off, community and lifestyle are cherished. We've a lot of things we've heard concern a small town identity, a family oriented identity, and a laid back identity. Parks and open spaces are highly valued. Things that were called out in particular include Bolsa Chica, the State Beach, and Central Park, as well as the West. The beach. Um, was cherished and, and something that was identified as important key things we heard there had to do with the cleanliness of the beach, the atmosphere, the pier, the ability to do bonfires, and other beach activities. 
Public safety was expressed as an important consideration with key themes emerging about the high quality of the police and fire departments and the high level of government services provided. And then that's related to the public services that we've heard a bunch about concerning schools, libraries, and by jogging paths as just key examples of things that people have touched on. So that's all the things that people really can share. Now we get to some of the harder parts. What are the key opportunities and things in the future that are going to face the city and should really be taken advantage of or addressed? We've heard a lot about population growth and making sure that it's dealt with in the right way. There are concerns about density, about traffic, and those two things together taken in the context of preserving that small town feel that we saw in the previous slide. It's very important. Encouraging commercial development is also seen as a key opportunity, um, particularly preserving the ability to operate small businesses, moms and pops, getting rid of or reducing uh, commercial vacancy in the community, and importantly, creating jobs locally. <coughs> Developing more vital <coughs> pedestrian infrastructure was also expressed as a key opportunity for the city. And then sustainability was raised as a really big opportunity for Huntington Beach considering the existing resources and being able to kind of preserve those or sustain them for future generations to enjoy, including open space resources, a general green consciousness, and reducing pollution. Some of the challenges, things that we know of today that we're going to be facing going into the future that were important to the community as they express them through those activities, including overcrowding, increased density, or potential overbuilding at certain locations. The ability to continue meeting future water needs, improving and expanding senior services and resources, outreach and the city's relationship with the larger community being a, a challenge to, to continue, ensuring that housing remains affordable to the wide range of people who fall into each home, and then being prepared, being prepared for things like earthquakes, sea level rise, and other natural hazards, tsunami, and the like. Very important to the community as expressed through the outreach that we've heard thus far. So we've taken that and distilled it then in that memo to a number of key things that, again, are steps toward getting to those guiding principles that we've discussed. A number of those previous slides talked about density, overbuilding, overcrowding. And so one of the key things for the process is going to be able to address density and growth while still maintaining beach culture and identity. Water and power remain important resources here in the future, and so it's important for us to ensure that those are adequate, sustainable, and available to the community. It's important to maintain and enhance the quality of the city's most valued resources. This gets again to those um, things that people cherish the beaches, the parks, wetlands, and open spaces. Supporting economic development, particularly commercial development, small businesses, and new industries. We kind of step back and say, yeah, okay, economic development is an important priority, but it's important for us to kind of dial in on what are those things that seem to be the key opportunities. And it really seems to be those small businesses, new industries, and commercial development. And then continuing to improve that bike and pedestrian infrastructure that's already here, and then really working hard to continue to try to expand transit options, reduce congestion, and maintain roadways. This is related in, in many ways to some of the discussion this group had at our and, and you know, we, we know that that's a challenge in a highly auto-oriented community. Yet it's something the public has voiced as something to consider going forward in the general way. Continuing on some of the key themes, ensuring that Huntington Beach remains resilient to those natural disasters from the previous slide, as well as other environmental changes that might occur. Um, enjoying safe and clean neighborhoods, beaches, and public spaces that are afforded to the community by the high quality of community services, police services, and public safety. Improving and developing new resources to meet the needs of all community members for housing, transportation, and community services. And within that, a number of special groups have been identified, particularly seniors, youth, and young families, making sure that those opportunities remain in the face of some of these uh, known environmental challenges and changes in the environment. Enhancing opportunities for culture, arts, and entertainment that are important to a variety of community members, and then updating the city's infrastructure, water, sewer, street, and other facilities. 
those are also addressed. So that's sort of how we distill a lot of the input that we receive. And you can imagine this is wide ranging and a bit all over the place, but this is how we feel that those key issues, things that we can cherish, the issues and opportunities are expressed and can be worked with going forward in the context of the general plan. These are the themes that drive how the guiding principles attached to the vision are created. Okay, that concludes that portion of the presentation. Now we're happy to engage in, in an open discussion. I think we've allocated maybe what can we about 20 minutes, minutes for this overall discussion. Sure. I have a question. On you said 500 people engaged in this, and then when you look at the numbers here, I don't understand. Are we going to get the raw data? Because you have like overcrowding, sick out uh, of 500 people. That's that's all we got. At sustainability too. So it doesn't seem very important to 500 people if only two people talked about it. So is there some way you're saying? That's a priority because it has a two or or a six out of this five hundred. Are we going to get this data to look at? We're essentially identifying those things as priorities. You know, not just necessarily because of the six people at one event called it a priority, but if we're seeing that emerge as a priority in multiple settings. Right, but we've only presented six, so you said five hundred. So I'd expect the number to be of all the data you collected, not six. Right. Yes. Have, um, and the, uh, well, we have it in our department. We have um, a copy, I guess, of all of the raw data, if you will. This um, the community engagement summary that you received in the email um, summarizes it um, and summarizes the parts of it, but all of the raw data is available. We can provide that to you or to any of the members if you want it. It's just well, I was just wondering, I mean, because if you're, you're saying this is our, you're, you're taking what the public said and, and saying, okay, these are real important things, but is it some of them? I mean, and, and that's where I want to see how you're saying that we got this input and did it maybe, maybe there's more than six or, you know, whatever it is, but I would prefer to know, you know, what the public is really pushing for rather than, you know, just we, we here or the city or the stakeholders. But if it's the uh, you know public, like I said, that's that's a dismal number. All all these, I think the best I saw was fourteen, which was the beach. And I know more than more than fourteen people probably. Where, wanted that. where are you looking at? Uh, your page twelve. Page. Yeah. yeah, page twelve. It's one of many. I mean, all the all the ones. They, the numbers are really small, so, so that's why I was trying to figure out how you were coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Their percentages. No, no. So yeah. one of the things that, that would make sense. No, I'm glad you bring it up. When I I had thought about um, totaling all of them uh, when, when I was looking at this, so the way that this got presented was for the different venues. So these numbers relate to the visioning workshops, but we didn't total the visioning workshops plus the Easter egg plus the bonfire um, in. Some of the exercises were the same in each of those venues, and some were a little different. But we could definitely do that, kind of tally the like exercises from them, because this is just one piece of it. Like that page right, just right, represents that. the visioning, and at the um, Easter egg hunt where we, you know, had input from I don't know, roughly 300 people. Right? We couldn't do the same kind of exercises that we could do in the library, so um, it. There's not necessarily apples to apples input on each of those, but we could go back and right. But our, our original meetings were you were putting out apples. You were saying these are the six things we're looking at, right. or ten things we're looking at. So right. however you looked at them at each event, they were pretty much the same <coughs> set of variables. A, a I just sort of would like to see okay. what exactly you know. Right, because for interestingly on that topic, you know. While there were people, let's say, who made that comment about the overcrowding, there were also people who said there wasn't an issue. So, um, okay. yeah, we can go back and kind of tally that. I was just going to say, yeah, I think percentages would, would help a lot. Like the percentage of people who thought, you know, density and overcrowding was an issue. Like right? when you put that up there, if you would kind of group like items, I don't know if they would group in. Um, 
one priority that they need to throw out there as, as I do. So like what they have in the online survey percentages on page 20? Yeah, so like doing something like that for everything. Yeah. Yeah. Re re recognizing that they're not exactly comparable. But you can group them like you did on that screen and just say, out of this, you know, 10%, 20%, 40% over crime and then we'll something to do. Yeah, I think that's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so some of these things go at each other in opposite directions. Um, like, we want to have affordable housing and maintain the same population that we have now. <coughs> young families, but not do anything for them to live in. So how are we going to square that as we kind of go forward with some of this? And how is that going to be presented if we're going to cut the public, if we can have the public's input now? Is that our decision to start to try and figure out what, what we're weighing in on that? Because, again, some of this is the different groups have different opinions on this and based on age and certain other things. How's that going to play out? That is the whole project right there. I mean, it's, it's taking this diverse input and saying, what are the priorities and where do we put our resources? I mean, I, and I think, you know, this is the stage, this is that sort of very early stage of the project where we're casting a really wide net and we're asking people, what are the, what's important to you? And we gather that all up and we bring it to forums like this, to forums like the Planning Commission and ultimately the City Council. To help set those priorities. So, at, so at, at this stage, you know, we're in the we call the visioning stage, right? So we we've gone out to the community to find out what what matters to them, what they think is important, what is their vision for the community, um, and working with you, planning commission, and the council, as Jeff said. Um, and then the next phase of this is where we start talking about the issues and maybe what some of those conflicts are, right? So they overlap, obviously, because um, part of what we were doing in, in reaching out to the community in phase one is finding out where they thought challenges were, as well as opportunities. Um, our focus, really, for this first phase is to define what that vision is. And, um, and you can do that by figuring out what you like and what you don't like about a community. But ultimately, um, this, this committee will make a recommendation to the Planning Commission Right, about policies in the general plan, about how to move the city forward for the next 20 years. And um, and sometimes there are conflicts. You're not all going to agree right, on a policy, and that's just inherent in, in this. And um, and then ultimately the planning commission will make a recommendation to the council and will make that final decision on what you know those policies will be. There's a follow-up. Some of the, there would be risk assessment, I guess, established some of that. Like, a lot of people worry about tsunami. But what's the actual risk of that happening? Should we, are we going to get data for that type of thing? That comes in. Population growth. And do we actually have a bunch of small families that want to move here? That, I mean, those types of information. That's what we're going next. And that's the, you know, this, this, this stage is the hey, what do you think? Okay. The next stage is trying to take that, take that and moving it into places where we have data and we want to line up. And here's what public opinion is saying. And here's what the data is saying. What is our path? Do you want to remind us of the, of the technical studies that were actually Sure. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're preparing, I think, 11 different technical studies, ranging from land use on one end to noise on the other, um, covering sea level rise, um, economic development, greenhouse gas emissions, traffic, and coming out six of them. Biological resources. Right. Police, fire services. Right. Police and fire services. Natural. And, 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 yeah, natural yeah. and environmental hazards, infrastructure, public facilities. Right, and that's that's material that the task forces Mary Beth mentioned earlier are meeting to review, discuss, provide input that ultimately comes to this one. And so what we'll be doing is going through that material and bringing you a summary of the information. You'll have access to all of it, but ultimately we'll be bringing you a summary of that information to try to match it up against what we're hearing. Oh yeah, I did. I had a question. It was about commercial. It said to support small businesses. So I just think you know, leave the small off and say support business. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I also think that there should be. Um, 
special call out for encouraging um, businesses to stay in Huntington Beach. I think we discussed that at the last meeting too. So I think that's uh, you know develop programs to help and encourage people to stay. Here. Going back to the numbers, five hundred is extremely small number. A city of two hundred thousand to serve the city. It seems like a very small number. So we can continue to get an input. Absolutely, we have an input program that's going to go with the whole work program. And again, my question: Why two thousand sixteen? It seems like it was long. <laughs> I, mean, I also, besides the server, I also manage projects with computers and stuff. And that just seems like an extremely long project. Right. I think that the best answer to that question is we want to take the time to get this input. I mean, it's, this, this is a process that, you know, we, we can have a process that's just paper driven. And that, that could go over that. We can have a process that's just asking the public, hey, what do you think, and then writing it up in your plan. We're trying to bring both of those. And that's that's a process that takes a little time. And then there's also there are also a number of legal things that are driving our timeline, including preparing ultimately an environmental impact report for the project, which is a, basically about a year process, about the fastest we can do one of those for a project of this size. It's going to be about a year. So we do we, we develop the timeline that allows for adequate public input while meeting those legal concerns, and, and that drives us into the process that goes. We have Alan and John. Yeah, I think mean, just a second ago, Frank said, I, I noticed that 500 people is two thirds of the percent of the population. Isn't there some way that uh, possibly with the social media that we could put that out to very many more and have them, in a sense, vote on these basic principles of Oregon and Bell? Uh, and uh, I think with the ANA, uh, in terms of the priority for how possibly, if, because at some point, Public going to see the general plan. And, they, and some are going to say, I never heard of this, and no input in the way they said it. If you had can establish that we had enough responses, then you're going to be able to equalize and some of that. That's good input, and I think we'll definitely take into consideration getting broader input on these guys. Jeff, I don't mean to pile on, but statistical significance is pretty important. And then, of course, the input from uh, those folks who, who have a vested interest in Huntington Beach residents, business owners, versus uh, maybe somebody who showed up at a workshop. I don't know the demographics. I know there's some capture of demographics in here. But uh, you mentioned you put something on the water bill or the gas bill, one of those. Um, is there a, you mentioned a plan to continue to collect data, although we're, we're starting down this process. Can you tell us a little bit more about the data collection plan so that we can add some statistical significance? Probably like not going to change much. I mean, these issues look like they're pretty common, but um, just to ensure that we didn't miss anything, so that you can uh, publish it for the folks and let them know that you know it is statistically significant, and you, you did what you can to grab all the, the issues. So, what's what's the plan for collecting data? When you're talking about data, do you mean data about the like, number of houses in the community, that kind of data, or are you talking about outreach data? Well, you mentioned there's continuing to collect input. Oh yeah. And so, from that input, I, I don't know, I guess I should have on a website to take a survey to yeah. understand what kind of demographics you're collecting. Um, but what's the plan? How much longer are we going to collect data so that what we're publishing is significant? So, the, the, this overall program has um, different forms of outreach and opportunity for community input um, throughout the, you know, two years, basically, that we're engaged in. And it comes in various forms, and um, and it's somewhat fluid depending upon you know where we see an opportunity to improve output. So well, and, and I'll fully answer that. But well, we're we mentioned the 500 now. Um, we're we don't want to suggest that that's all we're you know going to to look at, look at because obviously in a community of 200,500 is not significant, right? Um, it is very hard, it can be very hard to get people's attention about something like a general plan, right? Um, and so we work very hard at that. Um, we, for this first phase of outreach, you know, in addition to the, the water billing, which
which seems um, maybe old school, but it works for a lot of people. Um, we did a push on the city's Facebook page um, that we, um, I don't know, we did so many different things, right, to uh, advertise for the bonfire and for the visioning workshops and so forth. And um, with everybody's busy lives, it's hard to get people there. Um, that said, um, the, uh, we're working with the Chamber of Commerce. Um, you know, they're putting a letter in their chamber newsletter. We're going to have an article in the Sands, you know, the recreational guide that will be coming out in the fall. And um, we're going to continue to put things on the um, face page. We had a meeting today to do like a little promotional video that we can push out on YouTube. We can put on Channel 3. Um, we will um, have study sessions with the planning commission that are advertised that are open to the public as well as the city council. Um, in addition to workshops where we show up at Bellaterra Theater on a Saturday afternoon or a Thursday evening and are trying to connect with and get input from people who might not otherwise engage in the process. I mean, a lot of you are what we would consider the regulars, right? <laughs> you come to the meetings, you watch the council meetings, right? And we're going to get your input. And what we're really trying to do is to reach those people that we don't. So going to the Easter egg hunt, for example, you know, the, the 300 people or so that we interacted, I think maybe five of them I've ever seen in City Hall before, right? So that was significant. I mean, it may not seem like a lot to you, but in the scheme of things, with the planning commissioners here knowing how sometimes you get very few people who show up at a hearing, you know, 500 people is a lot of people. It's the beginning, and, but, and we will continue to work at it. So in terms of our plan for data, um, we do have a set of plans, and we have press releases, we have hearings. You, this committee, and our task forces, as I've said before, it sounds cliche, but it's true, you are our ambassadors out into the community. You represent commissions, you're on boards. You know, talk about the general plan update. Get your friends and colleagues and family members to show up our meetings. That's why we're here, that's what this process is. It's, you know, the community. And so we will do everything we can to get to let people know about this. But um, at the end of the day, we can't bring them to the meeting. Um, so we do have a defined plan. And we'll continue to work at it. And if you have specific ideas of things that we're not thinking of, um, send us an email, pick up the phone, and call us. But we're trying to use new social media um, and as well as traditional methods um, and everything in between. At the Easter egg hunt? Yeah. Were they the same responses that you got it to you from cities that you get from everybody else? Um, I think it was similar. It was interesting. If we had a lot more um, people with children, go figure, um, and uh, we, we had uh, a, a much greater racial diversity at the Easter egg hunt, and um, we also had quite a few people who weren't from the city, who were you know, visiting the city park, and so giving a visitor's perspective is also important. They weren't the majority at all, but um, we didn't get those at our visioning workshops. So that was a really great um, opportunity we felt. We, we would think of Bellaterra as another example. We might get also more people who aren't living in the city or we'll get the, the 20 somethings, right, that would never go to a vision workshop, right? Um, or hardly ever go to a vision workshop. So, um, sorry, it's true. Um, so, yeah. So it was productive. I saw three hands. Are we just good? Is that right? Yeah, um, just something to consider. Send out something like with a water bill, we eliminated the entire population like myself, where I don't get a single bill via mail, and every single apartment or condo resident. So it went out electronically too. So if you got your bill electronically, it should have gone through that. Way. No, but what I mean is all all apartment and condo, and they don't get water bills. So just something to think about. But like when we when it's that kind of thing. Like social media, we hope that people are going to log on, but a water, like literally, they don't even get it. Right. So we, I was just thinking to counteract that, contact the HOAs. Right, and we, we have that on them involved. Right. And we do have um, that on our list to contact the HOAs. The water bill went out to over 70000 No, and I still so, think, I mean, it was yeah. still like a good idea for the yeah. private homeowners yeah. and everything. Yeah. So we I'm know. just saying, like, we know. Yeah. So I have to see a couple more hands. There's a uh, dollar yeah. drop yeah. 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 Yeah.
to just the point, you got 500 people. But the question is, do you know anything about these 500 people, like you said? Are they renters? Are they homeowners? Are they going to buy in the city? Uh, it, you know, they could all be 500 senior citizens, which could skew the result. So I, I, I understand the difficulty in getting the responses, but it's also, like you said, we all have the best of interest. This may not represent the city where the East Day comes, as we saw had a lot of different people. So well, that's why we go to different places. But, but are you collecting the data of kind of who is inputting because... Well, the online survey you does... Know, business owners think differently than, you know, people who are homeowners. Yeah. There are, um, in some of our workshops, we have had an opportunity for people to provide some information on the online survey. Um, so I think it was one other... But I wanted to ask a question. Yeah, thank you for letting me make a comment. I, I just want to make an observation about the use of the word public uh, in the process of contacting voters this last election, heard a lot of negative comments about the apartment buildings going up on Beach Boulevard and the similar construction going up by Belaterra. As, as you observe, now it gets people's <coughs> attention. But if you go to the city council and say, how did this happen? Well, we had a recommendation from the planning commission, which in turn had committees, and we had public input. I think it's that use of the word public as if it's a representative sample. And several of you have already made this observation, but how, how do we know that it's anything other than a self-selected group? So I, I think that as this process goes forward, if you could couch the recommendations as we have had public input, not be heard from the public, I think it's an important difference to keep in mind. I have a question, and, and I think part of what we were hoping this segment, this discussion, which we not really accomplished, was um, in terms of the results that we got from the community activities that we've conducted thus far, did anything surprise you? Well, that's where I think it's right next. Yeah. <laughs> anything surprise you about the results that we've gotten? Yeah. Well, I think that the community has been very open to kind of getting
environmental resources, um, safety, whether it be from natural or man-made issues. Um, there's a variety of practices that General Plan does. The General Plan does not prioritize them, but it identifies policies to deal with all of them. And the, the principles that are provided here are not prioritized. They're just presented alphabetically. And, and what the, the goal of this decision process is, is to make sure that you know, the principles reflect the community, right? What is important to the community? Not necessarily saying, you know, safety is more important than housing, for example. They all have their place, right, in a, a fully functioning community. But how do you move each of those forward and how do each of those topics um, embody what the city does? Right. So this isn't we are going to talk about priority, but the general plan itself um, is is going to be addressing all of those topics. And I thought one more thing real quick. I thought Jeff alluded to this that because it came up about um, the rise in the ocean level. Okay. I, I would hate to, haven't been in education for 38 years, and chase my tail a lot of times with different projects. I would hate to think that we're chasing after this. And I, and I, if I heard like right, you said, that's where they pass for us. That's where they go in and they actually try and investigate. Is it true? Is it not? I mean, it might be the stuff with global warming to figure that out. Is that true or is that not? But I would hate to be coming up with a plan or addressing it when we find out it, it's hogwash. That the sea level is a high. I'm just saying. So, so, and I assume you said that's what the task force are for. They go in and they come up with statistics and investigate that. So we're not spending time addressing the rise in sea level, and it's, it's not going to happen. I'm not saying one way or another. I just want to make sure that this committee, as we go and address these different issues and items, that they're real, and not not just in the minds of people. Because if that's the case, then you have to get that information out there, too. This was a concern by the public, but we've looked into it. we studied it for a year, and you know, it's, 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 it's not okay. We have to, to try to get this back on track. It's been a little while since I've been here, but
time now to transition to the next part, the second half. And I think some of you are ready for this. I've heard prioritization come up a few times. And so that's uh, just going to give us a presentation. Again, we'll discuss uh, after this presentation. And then we have a prioritization activity for everybody that will take this from alphabetical order to your recommendations in the perfect way. Okay, so the next, the next portion of this uh, addresses the vision book and the guided principles that have been distributed to you in advance of the meeting and are available in the back if you don't have a copy. The first thing, the, the, the first sort of policy piece, if you will, of a general plan, because ultimately what a general plan does is it's a series of words and maps that look out 20 years and describe you know, what, is, what is the community like 20 to 25 years, and how are we going to get there? The first level that we do that at is as a vision. And it's stepping back. And it's really, it's, what's hard about a vision oftentimes for detail-oriented people, and I count myself among those, it's to back up and to say, well, that's really the big picture here. Without, without diving into the weeds and getting into the details, what is the type of community that we want to be in 25 years in answering that question? So it's a long-term aspiration, describing what it is the community wants to achieve, considering all those things we heard about in the public outreach thus far and the things we're going to continue to hear about. First off, it can kind of take you off guard a little bit because it's written in future tense. It's written describing 2040, not written describing 2040. So it, it assumes that these changes have happened, or the things that we want to emphasize and continue have been emphasized and continued, and it talks about your community in 2040. It's developed to inspire the general plan. This is supposed to kind of be the, the, the big picture that we're going for. And it's meant to inspire the policies that go into the general plan. It describes what the city wants to accomplish and the challenges and, and opportunities that you're going to get along the way. And it ultimately sets a framework, or sometimes I like to say bookends, for the course of action. It essentially defines what, what, what's all in play. What are we dealing with, and how are we going toward it? There's a lot of words on this slide. They're also present in the draft booklet that you have. This is the draft of the vision statement. It essentially, it starts with a statement in 2040, the city of Huntington Beach is. And it starts to, this is meant to be the culmination or summary of a lot of the um, things that we have discussed previously, and ultimately the launch point for the guiding principles. A number of things are highlighted, or presented in bold in this statement, and those are because we believe that those are recurrent. These are things that we've heard on a repetitive basis that are values for the community moving forward. And rather than read the whole statement, you do have that available to you, I'll just highlight those points. First, a desirable place for people of all ages, ethnicities, and cultures to live, work, play, and visit. So we're getting to residential, business, recreation, and tourism as well. A healthy and safe community, again emphasizing the importance of public health and safety and, and provision of high quality police and fire services in the community. Downtown thrives and businesses throughout the city <coughs> culture of innovation. So definitely you know, tipping our hat to downtown as an important cornerstone of the community talking about the role of business in the community, and really saying innovation. Innovation is important. It has been always to this community and will continue to be something that's emphasized in the general community. Development is guided to ensure responsible growth. Uh, we believe that it's a fairly broad statement at a vision level, but it gets to that question of density, overcrowding, and a lot of the concerns that we have raised. Um, the community and its priorities are resilient. In other words, the vision and the plan is meant to stand the test of time. Yes, it can be amended, it can be adjusted, it will be amended, it will be adjusted. But the purpose of the vision is to kind of say, here's where we're going. And yeah, we might start over here, we might start over here along the way, but this is where we're going. Um, and as the community remains resilient in light of a lot of the economic challenges we've talked about, in light of a lot of the environmental challenges that we've talked about. And ultimately, protecting what is valued today. So in that last statement, the city, in partnership with the community, balances the needs of future generations.
operations while projecting what is valued today. That's ultimately the mission of the general plan. So there's a lot of a number of other things that are highlighted in between those statements. So again, future oriented, written in that, in that future tense, describing the community of 2040, and hitting a lot of the points that we discussed previously as important communities. Any and so we do have another bit of time for discussion uh, just on that statement. So actually let me put it back up so you can see it again. Anything here that you feel is missing? Things things that are not captured in the statement that maybe should be? And or anything that surprises you. I don't see like the resort destination or destination for visitors highlighted. I see just work, play, and visit. I mean, I think the city council wants to make this a destination where people have to come, stay in hotels, spend their money, and you know, tour people from different states and countries. Okay, so some, something emphasizing Huntington Beach as a destination. That, that as has a, those yeah, as a, yes, as a destination to here. Yeah. I was just wondering why you didn't just say a desirable place for all people to live, work. Why do you put age, ethnicity, culture? Why is it all people covered? Because in that, we might have got someone, you know, in 2014. So <laughs> why put it in there? That's a fair statement. Um, something about the structure uh, or Infrastructure, um, maintaining the infrastructure, which is somewhat key for, for future infrastructure for things we don't know about yet. So, if that, what could that be linked to some of this community and priority that gets a little deeper into infrastructure? I'd like to see it called out um, specifically. Um, and then, uh, I thought it was just really vague. I mean, I'm an English teacher. That's like why I have an issue with it. But like the last sentence, I'm like protecting what is valued today. If my student wrote that, I put a like, what does this mean? Question mark on their paper. And I felt like that for a lot of it. I'm not trying to be super nitpicky because I know we need to keep it broad because we are trying to touch on so many subjects. But kind of like what Dan just brought out, like infrastructure isn't even in there. And Let's be honest, when things aren't pointed out, a lot of times, well, it wasn't written in there, so we are very easy to overlook things. So I do think it's important that it, it's a little bit more specific. Um, and maybe though I, not to go against what Eric said, but I kind of appreciated that it said all ethnicities, ages, and cultures, because that hasn't always been the demographic of Huntington Beach. And so I think it's important <coughs> to emphasize that. True. True. I'm like 18 different ethnicities, so. But I just think it's important to me to be a little bit more specific with some of the things. Okay. And we well, put gender in there too. Because gender is changing in our society, so. Yeah, why not so that's why I'm saying just all yeah, people. Yeah, because then it's going to eliminate it some It eliminates any of that stuff yeah, in the future. Right. Okay, thanks. We have it. Yeah, I'll go get my seat. Well, what I see here is some of the priorities. because they're not as important. And so the point being, you know, keep it simple, you know, deal with KISS principle, and take out ethnicity and all this stuff because it's implied when you say all. Uh, it's easier to remember. It's easier for people to uh, regurgitate back, and that's the important part of the, the 
a vision, if you were to, if you were to poll somebody in Huntington Beach and say, what's Huntington Beach vision is that I have no clue idea. And uh, I had that same problem with Boeing, by the way, because I couldn't tell you where a vision is either, because it's too wordy. And so this is not an easy exercise, so I commend you for what you put up there in the draft. Uh, but keep that in mind as you uh, provide inputs for a vision statement. It should be inspirational and where you would like to be. One, one thing I didn't say and you might want to think about is just, yeah, I, I agree, make it simple, shorter. But one of the things I didn't say is just like the great place to bring the family or raise the family, things like that would be here. So you kind of say help them save the community, but yeah, I think that's just point to what we We always, I know it's the biggest thing in downtown, but we always emphasize that, but it almost seems like Huntington Beach is only downtown. I mean, it's like we don't ever talk about the north side of Huntington Beach, what's going on, or how to help the north side or the southeast side. It's always downtown, downtown, which is three blocks. It just seems it's always that way. I think one of the things that's lacking from the mission statement is this could be a and I think that we're missing the whole beach culture aspect that Huntington Beach offers. And you could read this, this could apply to Thousand Mountain, this could apply to a lot of cities. And so I think we're missing the uniqueness that we have, which is our beach. This is what draws people here. And to lose that identity, I would like to see us try to do more of that. I heard a few murmurs. Do anyone have anything else? Um, are there any other comments to support that or in line with that? Hello. The beach was missing. The pier is the thing. Oh, the beach is a good one. Yeah, the pier is a good one. Yeah, the pier is a good one. Yeah, it's 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 a Things through some of the nonprofits and um, and the environmental board, and so uh, to me, a little bit more about the environment and how we're going to keep it uh, pristine for at least try would be important. Why is offering employment training in there? I mean, that seems like something. I don't know if that's if the government's going to be doing that, but that doesn't seem like something. I mean, I could swap that out for sustainability or anything else, but I don't know. I mean, I saw that was in here somewhere, and I'm really kind of confused as to what the city offers currently for employee training, for employment training. Um, we should facilitate that, obviously, if you can try the industry, but I don't know if that's coming out of the board vision. Yeah, I think that's it. Any other, sorry. The word sustainability gets bandied around a lot, but I, I can guarantee you the majority of the public probably doesn't know what it is you folks mean it is. Uh, so I think a pretty detailed description of that would be helpful for them, because I see that word over and over and over again. But I think people take it for granted that they know what it is, but I, I don't think they do. <clears throat> okay, so in addition to the vision, and, and thank you, first off, thank you for those comments on the vision. I think they were all on point and things that we will take into account and present. As, as the vision is being presented to other aspects in the community, those are, that's a good list for us to start from in terms of input onto the vision that ultimately the planning commission and the council will add to. In addition to the vision statement, if you keep kind of turning in that vision book, You'll see 10, what we're referring to as guiding principles. These are statements, and they are presented, as we've talked a couple of times so far, alphabetically, without priority. So these are, these are 10 things that are being listed as potential guiding principles for the general plan update, emerging from the output, I'm sorry, the input, emerging from the community input that we've discussed previously, and hopefully taking us to the next step of devising goals, policies, and programs for the general plan. We derive from the vision that guide the general plan. Again, they are written in that future tense, describing the community we want to be <coughs> in the year 2040. And 
here's where we begin with some narrative to help underscore what are the challenges and the opportunities that we have to move through in order to get from today, 2014, to future 2040 along this particular time. So this, this starts to get us into that narrative of if this is what we want to be, here are some of the things that we have to accomplish. But it does that in a way of talking about those things in the Ultimately, the guiding principles provide a basis and a rationale for us to develop more specifics, and this is where we start to then get to the detail on the next page of the issues, the goals, and the policies that will ultimately go in the general plan. Part of the basis for that is going to be what's already in the general plan today. But another part of the basis for that is going to be the data that we've talked about previously that we're currently generating, changes to state law that have occurred over the last 20 years that are directing us to look at the topics in the general plan and we'll look at them in different ways, and ultimately the, the public opinion and input, input from the public. There are 10 of these, they're presented with letters, there's a narrative attached to each one. I want to um, sort of point out a couple of things. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to present I'm going to present these in an overview way. We're going to have a discussion period where you can ask some questions for clarification on what they are. There's a worksheet that's been distributed to everybody in the room here today. What we're going to do is, is attempt to prioritize these guys. And we're doing that, you may ask the question, well, why does priority matter? And I think we've had some discussion tonight about some of the importance of priority. We really see the process of having the impact prioritize these draft guiding principles as a way of starting the discussion in the overall community about the importance of each of the principles. Ultimately, what we'll do is this vision book will be presented to the Planning Commission and the Council and subsequent meetings for their consideration. It will also be presented in that same alphabetical order. But the Commission and Council will have the benefit of a summary of the GPAC's impressions and priorities to work with as they're prioritizing these for their own purposes and for presentation on the city at large. So this is kind of that beginning stage. So, this begins and these are all expressed, as we talked about before, as, 20, as potential 2040 headlines. A, culture and arts services. So culture and arts, cultural opportunities abound, there's theaters, the Golden Bear, and more. Describing that as a potential headline for the year 2040. That includes new venues for the arts, entertainment, and cultural activities in the community compared to today. That in 2040, Huntington Beach is the regional hub for culture and the arts, and that cultural activities and events in the community are expanded. <coughs> Further narrative that goes with that is present in the vision. Yes? Just to emphasize, what is um, the bolded language up there that's the headlines? Yes. Those, that was specific wording that a, a, a community resident put down when we were doing the headline exercise. So we didn't develop those as staff, a consultant. That was just, we just took the a headline, a representative headline from one of the ones that we received. And as, as you look at that material in the vision book, you'll also see that there's a number of other quotes. You know, they, these are basically sort of snippets or quotes from the public input that we got relative to that topic that show other comments that the members of the public have. And you know, what we're doing with this is essentially grabbing some really descriptive ones and putting them in here in ways to help support the Okay, the next guiding principle is economic vitality. The potential headline that local businesses thrive in an innovation friendly environment. So in 2040, the local businesses in Huntington Beach are the top choice for highly qualified job seekers. Innovation and workforce diversity create high paying jobs in the community. New businesses and jobs are provided in areas that have technology and infrastructure. <coughs> And local attractions continue to draw tourists from here. So, of course, the components of that overall economic community. Next up is infrastructure, uh, addressing some of the previous comments, but down at the back of the principal level, elevating that into the vision. Funds flow toward improved infrastructure. So, the infrastructure facilities, the water, the sewer, street, and other infrastructure <coughs> the community is updated. And new infrastructure, and the way we plan for new infrastructure is done through more of a comprehensive systems approach, as opposed to sort of one-off 
fix it. That's, that's a comment that we heard from the number. Mobility and access is up next. Biking, walking, and transit use rates reach all-time highs. The bicycles, pedestrians, and transit users become a priority on roadways. Downtown streetscapes are improving. If there's no observable traffic congestion along the traffic corridors, and regional transit connections are expanding. So again, vision, vision. <laughs> <laughs> what we're aiming for is are you, are, you, are you plugging in any way to pay for all of this? <laughs> I spent four years on the infrastructure committee, we're dreaming. and it went nowhere. Dreaming. No one thought about how to pay for it. That's why they call it a vision. It's a vision. Grants. The money tree will grow in 2035. It will all be paid for. I like that. Okay, open space and recreation. Headline, residents don't have to travel far to play outside. Um, they're, they're trying to achieve a balance between recreational structures and entities and activities throughout the city. That passive natural open spaces continue to be managed carefully and successful partnerships for parks, shared facilities, and resource conservation areas continue. This is stuff you're kind of already doing, and this is acknowledging that continuum of expanding. Public safety, Huntington Beach celebrates the top <coughs> public safety ratings. They've done a headline for 2040 with enhanced street lighting and design in public areas, open spaces, parks, and along streets and boulevards, and, an and, and that an increased police presence leads to fewer incidents and safety in the um, Definitely reflect of some of what Redevelopment and revitalization. My responsible growth is accommodated to maintain a small town. Revitalized commercial corridors are present in 2040. Some of the older industrial areas in town may be repurposed for other uses. Downtown continues to be thriving and safe. Successful infill projects are realized, and a cautious and thoughtful approach avoids potential land use conflicts, along with continuing to provide for a diverse array of Resident services is up next, with the headline, the city reaches every resident through expanded community services and programs. Um, so there would be updated and expanded community and social services, community youth would have access to education and curriculum programs, as well as job training, and senior and elderly residents benefit from additional and accessible social services. Resource conservation is the next guiding principle. This might be my favorite. Blue like, ocean needs clean city. Um, this is thinking now about the beach and wetland areas as being protected from the valley. And a shift being made toward more renewable energy and conservation practices for the future. Providing support for local businesses to help them develop new technologies that in turn benefits the economic development of the community. And nonprofit organizations continuing to work with the city to protect community resources, promote resource protection, and provide education and information to the community at large about the benefits of some of the resources. And Surf City Community. Uh, this headline is Huntington Beach voted the most family friendly city in California. Um, partnerships would continue to help preserve the historic and cultural resources that give the community its beach identity as well as that identity itself. And the Surf City events and community art projects So again, ten principles that define sort of that, that top 2040 headline. Thinking about how we might describe this community in 2040, reflecting both the vision and, and, and input that we've gotten thus far. So of additional questions for you. They're similar to the questions we've asked on other topics, but one, did you agree with a number of these um, being potential guiding principles this far? And two, is anything missing? I, I think when we asked the is anything missing question about the state itself, we identified a few things that we wanted to guide principles. Those are things we certainly can uh, 
uh, the further guidance may have made up in this week. But I definitely want to revisit that question if there's anything missing in this sort of guidance. Yeah. I don't see anything about the beach being I mean, we are a beach city. I'd like to see um, alternative fuel stations being something that might be important in the future uh, and, and getting off of all of our cars with gas and make it easy for the people that have cars to. Uh, Get alternative fuel. Seem to be ignored. Charging stations. Charging stations. And I don't really see a whole lot of information about, you know, water as a commodity and how we're treating it like a good resource and what we're doing in order to try and preserve that. Um, I think conservation is good, but I don't think that's the only way that we're going to get out of this drought. So. Um, the other thing I don't see is going after grants to uh, fund some of these projects because somehow we have to get these projects funded. Um, and there's a lot of free money out there you just have to go and apply for. And I know that uh, some of the free money out in water we're not going after. So, it's surprising. So, would that be a guiding principle? I mean, it's a good point. I mean, it's part of execution, but it's not a guiding principle. Just things that I think are missing from 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 uh, you know an overall plan. I don't hear anybody talking about it. But I think it's important enough that it should be. Maybe it's not a guiding principle, but it should be at least part of a topic. So we're saying that you know, it looks like what you're talking about is going to be needed in, in, in a number of these areas. Mm -hmm. And it's always good to talk about all this, but it's like you know, Ruben said before. I know it's a vision, but where is, where is the capital going to come from? To, to fund all this, and so I don't know if it's a guiding principle, but yeah, I mean, probably. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's a vehicle that's going to have to be one of the many vehicles that will have to be used in order to get there. Eric, did you have a suggestion? No, it, everything he said would go under I. Or the some infrastructure. Well, yeah, infrastructure too. Uh, this stuff, you got this stuff. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, you know, I, it might, might be helpful to have some kind of a preamble to understand that these visions that we have are all subject to financing, to, to funding rather, and to uh, cooperative effort between the public and private sectors. Side, because, you know, I, I can, and I've seen, you know, things stated that are, are really an ideal, and next thing you know, you have a junior planner looking at it and saying, hey, you must do this, and before you know it, it's required as a condition of approval. So I think I think a little yeah. preamble up front might be helpful to set the stage. But, but I think it's important to say. Some, something that says, I mean, these, these are big picture and they're subject to, they're subject to financial reality. Yeah. <clears throat> so people, not only when they think of the project, they should also think of Balancing priorities. Are you not say, you're suggesting though that it just be a preamble as opposed to a guiding principle and be something about fiscal? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was something in the beginning. I, would, I was always told when we do these visionary things at the, the education level that you don't worry about money. Well, then what's the No, I know, but I mean, that's what we're always told because if you, if you, if you inject that, then it never goes anywhere. So it was always, you know, this pie in the sky. You don't don't let that stop. It. What is it we want? And then you may you may reach it. You may not. You know. But if you prioritize, you hope you get to all of them before the, the piggy bank drives up. And, and the, the, the point is fair, which is this is the big picture. The big picture eventually does lead to work. And and what what happens in between is some prioritization of this, and then with that work program, it's an annual, I mean, there's only so much the budget's going to be able to perform. So right. it's a matter of saying, at the general plan level, we want, we want to cover all of this, and we want to provide enough priority that a city council in five years has a good record to say, let's prioritize A over B. But it doesn't mean let's not put C, D, E, and F also. 
So I mean, I think that that's where that's where this comes into play. Is that you know this is us saying what's most important and what should we be planning for for the future, recognizing there is a continual check-in on that based on the availability of possible. I'd like to check back with Mary Beth on that because she mentioned that general plan does not have a priority. Each plan has a so there's no priority to the general plan, which is, I think, our major objective here. We are talking about prioritizing, etc. So why do we talk about prioritizing when each element of the general plan stands on its own? Well, I think, yeah, I think you have to, um, you know, Jeff kind of alluded to this, but, you know, well, it's, you know, within the general plan itself, nothing, it is a priority, but the, the point, when you bring a group together and, you know, and you're looking at these guiding principles and, um, a lot of times you just read it, but yeah, that sounds good, right? But if we have this exercise where we start talking about prioritizing them, right, it tends to bring out different aspects. Um, people's different points of view, and sometimes you can um, get a more refined look at these guiding principles. So, for example, you know, just when you kind of start thinking about how you prioritize them, the, the fiscal reality comes into play. And that's an important conversation, right, for the community to have. Even though we're doing a general plan and we're not doing the, you know, uh, a work program, as Jeff was saying, and, you know, we're not doing a, a capital improvement program right now for it, it's, it's an important part of the conversation. Um, yeah. So by having this exercise and not talking about priority, it, it just maybe brings out different aspects of the conversation. And and the reality is that the community, while general plans typically don't have a priority, that's not to say that the general plan couldn't have as part of its, uh, uh, our current general plan does have a preamble. Um, it, it's not to say that the city couldn't say, you know, these things, these top three things are the most important. You know, the general plan, can, as long as it meets the state requirements, can be what, you know, the community wants to be. So the community could prioritize things. We have typically done that, but that's not to say we couldn't. Um, but it's a, it's a way, basically, to get you all talking and, and make sure that um, these principles reflect what you think is important and, and how do they need to be refined? Do they need to be added to? Does one just not make any sense? And you know, you guys think it shouldn't be a principle. You know, I mean that's the you know, you're citizens in the community, right? And so um, that's what we want to carry forward. So comment from John? So go back to your original question about the uh, guiding principles, I think you did a great job of putting this together and, and if we could achieve them all to the highest potential it would be a phenomenal part of the city. There's some detail in each one of these things that could, that could go in terms of, uh, you know, what do you mean by a surf city community? You added some detail, there some questions there. Um, I think when you go from vision to execution, you have to do prioritization, otherwise you really never execute right there. you got to have some sort of priority, even though every one of them would like to be achieved at some point. So I don't see anything missing, um, although within each one of these, you might have a little bit more detail, you know, if you really want uh, to talk more about the... Uh, alternative fuels and those kinds of things, you know, would that be a priority? But if you look at the city from the standpoint of how everybody else looks at the city, uh, you know, think of resort destinations or other places where, where people are, I want to be there. What is it about that place that makes you want to be there? You know, it's clean, it's safe, it's, it's innovative, you know, uh, like this is mobility and access, you know, you see a lot more of that where people are connected throughout the city and can get to resources. And stuff. So I think, I think you hit up on all the right topics for that principles, you know, prioritization will help us get to execution. You know, I'd like to suggest one more. The future is, is uncertain. Technology is now at a very rapid rate, very rapid, if you will. And our environment is uh, under question as to what's going to happen in the future. I'd love to see something where it says, <clears throat> how do you be, how do you be prepared for the catastrophic, although unlikely, events. Uh, those are the things, uh, like swans, is a little bit where they come up and they can destroy a community. If one doesn't think it, try to think outside that box, these are these are wonderful things, but particularly they're quite 
relevant to what we are right now. What we don't know is what's going to happen in the future. And I think there would be some consideration, uh, maybe, uh, which is worried and concerned about and looking at zoning for future potential catastrophes that may not happen, but if they do, So I saw a few nodding heads when folks were saying nothing seems to be missing. Uh, does anyone have anything more to add on that? Any last comment? Just I think the, uh, the principles are the kind of bold phrases, like cultural nonsense and so forth. Uh, the headlines are somewhat confusing and misleading, I think, to some of those principles. And then finally, the J Surf City community has a standalone principle that doesn't say anything. Talking about the image of the city, and it's become an image. But references like on culture on the arts to a 25-year-old nightclub, I don't think that describes what we're talking about. Yeah, since, since we knocked it down anyway. So, there's a lot of these, I don't think uh, redevelopment and revitalization should have a reference to small town. We haven't made a decision that we want it. Our goal is a small town atmosphere. That's a statement. Part well, just the, I think the, the green phrases, just look at this sheet, don't properly describe the blue principles. I know it's, it's a cue way to, to communicate, but I don't think mm -hmm. it should be the slide up there. I think the, the principles should be the slide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. prioritization we've been talking about for the last hour or so. We're going to do a couple rounds of it. The first round we're going to do is a practice round. And the first thing, um, so tonight we're going to use a, a polling software called Turning Point. Uh, Jeff just pants the passing out the remote controls. So we're going to do a practice with it to make sure we're all comfortable using the device. So as a first step to get ready for the activities, um, Probably you could use a pen or a pencil if you don't have one, let me know, or if you have a great memory, that's even better. But we provided the worksheet to help you go ahead and give the prioritization to the friends and friends. And uh, just to note, these devices, they don't work anywhere else. So don't pocket them, they don't have any meaning outside of this room. Okay, so I can go, I'm going to go through this act to the activity again. Plus. So if you guys could uh, scroll down to the bottom third of your page, you'll see practice round, round one, round two, round three. We're going to be in the practice round. And what we'd like you to do is match a letter from the guiding principles to your prioritization for it. With one being the highest and ten being the lowest. So we thought it might be better for you to do it on your worksheet, and then we're going to manually we're going to enter those into uh, with the device in just a moment. Question? You need a pen. I think it's the one thing we didn't bring, but I can. Oh yeah, there's sharpies. Let me. Let me I have one. Okay, I have a pen. Yeah. Here we go. Thank you. Does anyone else need a pen? Okay. You're welcome to use that. Uh, we didn't email the sheet, so you probably can't use the letter. So is that, um, is that clear to everyone? Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, yeah, go ahead and take a couple of minutes to do this. We're getting the software set. Yes.
show us how those are prioritized based on your discussion. So we're not going to have a discussion round on this. This is really practice. Um, we'll go ahead and do it again. If you want to go ahead and enter them in that same order again, fill in that second row exactly the same way. 
yeah, you and know. fill it in. We just wanted to do this first one as practice, just to make sure everybody's got the system right and, and, and we're working. But that's how we would organize this. After we do this next round, we're going to step back for a minute and ask, you know, if, if somebody felt really strongly about item A, for example, culture and the arts, which is showing up as kind of one of the bottom items on our list, it's an opportunity for you to kind of speak up and lobby with the rest of the group as to why you think that's an important priority for Huntington Beach. Alternative is also true. If, you know, item B here, economic vitality, is the most important item to somebody and you want to speak up and say, hey, that needs to stay at the top because it's vital and super important for the community, it's your opportunity to do that. We'll have a period for discussion and we'll stop and we'll do it again. And if time allows, we're going to do that twice. Um, it, it gives us the opportunity to have some much more detailed discussion on these and, and to, as, as Mary Beth was doing earlier, give you an opportunity to discuss where there might be agreement, disagreement, strong feelings or strong values about any of these individual particular guidance. Okay, so we'll go ahead and go into round one. <laughs> the white smoke. <laughs> do, we, do we put a white puff of smoke when we're... <laughs> okay, so go ahead and take that second group now. And if you feel, I mean, if, if everything worked right for you on the first one, you want to express those priorities again, just write them right in there again. And go ahead and fill it out. And if you guys could put them down or put your turning point back. Down when you're in done. front of you or a little further out, that helps us keep track of this one. on the off chance you mess up, it will take the last 10 you put in no matter what. So you can always go back and start over from the left if by chance you get it wrong. Just stick with your first one. Yeah, pretty well. Services and then A, culture and the arts. 
Okay, so a little bit different than the practice round. So, okay, so the top four are a little different, and then it goes. But the practice round is practice. This is the one we're discussing. <laughs> so this is an opportunity for those who feel strongly about something at the top or at the bottom and care to speak up and lobby for one of those particular options. Let's get the conversation going. So. I'd like to start because I, I view the residents here are highly concerned about the future, about being able to travel from uh, downtown Huntington Beach or Memphis and Beach to the city, out beyond the city. And to do that, they have to have uh, mobility and less traffic, less traffic, less people. And therefore, I, cho I chose, as an example, a mobility and access as a very high priority, and residential uh, services, because Residential services looks at the community and meets the needs of the community, including youth and seniors. So, can I ask yes. for a clarification? Yes. You, said. You, you want people to be able to get around, right? That was the first part. But then you said <coughs> less traffic, fewer people. Oh, less congestion. Less con okay, I didn't want to make sure that you, like, you didn't want to check your way out. You, wanted, you still want people to be able to come to the city. <coughs> right here. All right. I support what Ed says. <laughs> cool. Any other any other strong thoughts one way or the other, top or bottom? Yeah, I would just suggest that the first round where uh, economic vitality was first, and then the second round you had infrastructure first, but you have to have economic vitality to fund infrastructure. So I, I would make the case that economic vitality needs to stay number one because without it, none of the rest of this is possible. Speaking as a member of the Chamber of Work Directors, I think that's... I was wondering why we agreed. We have Mark and then we'll go next. Um, yeah, I put open space and recreation first because in a, in a growing community with very little remaining open space, it's a, a non-renewable resource once you've Lost it, it's gone. And then my number two is economic vitality because it's important to have the financial engine to pay for the stuff we want to do. And then I get into infrastructure again, following the, the logic is we need some way to, to pay for it. So I put the economic vitality first. And then I get into um, the redevelopment and revitalization. Again, catching up on some of the older parts of the city that have been neglected. And then from there, once we have the economy ticking up, I picked um, resource conservation. And then I sort of went down the list of the softer, more cultural and, and family things towards the law. Is it Kim? Yes. Um, I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit with I along the lines of what Pat said. I feel like the economic vitality and infrastructure are so linked together. Um, without the infrastructure, it's hard to attract the types of businesses that we want for the city. And I, I look at examples like the city of Austin that's been very progressive with building out their internet abilities and being able to track the types of businesses that will make Huntington Beach a desirable place. So if we can develop our infrastructure um, to attract high-tech businesses and, and the types of businesses that, that will be around in 2040, I think that that will help our tax base and improve the economic I don't capacity. disagree with that, but I think it's kind of the chicken and the egg. It argument. is, absolutely. And I agree. I think there you know, with 400 to yeah. $900 million of unfunded liabilities in the city, mm -hmm. infrastructure, you can't start the process by spending that money before you have it. So that would be... <coughs> <laughs> yeah, if, uh, if I may, I'm, I'm not a member of the committee, but I would like to talk briefly about the gorilla in the room. We are currently spending $4 trillion at the federal level, and we're taking in $3 trillion. We're running a deficit at the rate of $1 trillion a year. That deficit is currently $17 trillion. If nothing changes in 25 years, it will be $42 trillion. Somewhere along the way, there could be a total monetary and economic collapse worldwide. At that point, public safety, 
really and truly becomes the only relevant issue. And so I would argue strongly that even though all of these other things are desirable, in the face of that reality and what, what's going on in the rest of the world, public safety should still be the number one priority. Just to get clarity, clarity about terms, uh, a lot of people when we talk about infrastructure, in their mind all they see is potholes. Um, so obviously we've talked about internet and, and, and maybe some more clarification about what exactly is the world of infrastructure, so people understand that more. So that would include things like lift stations, sewer systems, sidewalks, roads, sure. trees. Yeah, I just don't think people have a real good, you know, feeling of the scope of it. Yeah. Um, I, so I, I did it by plus and minus on where I was in consensus. So the two that I was huge off on was mobility and access. And I kind of brought that up earlier that in order to have a lot of these things, you need to get people to and from them in a, in a, a reasonable manner. And I know a lot of people want to get out of their cars. And then open space and recreation. I have a op complete opposite side of the We have um, prioritized that highly as opposed to just saying we have this as protected. And then instead of um, trying to gain more, um, I think prioritizing that I could possibly kind of instill that idea that we're trying to get more and more open space, which I'm not opposed to, but I don't know if that necessarily is going to be, it's not revenue generating and kind of driver for the city. So I don't, that's why I kind of moved that down farther towards the end of the priority list down by community and arts. Okay. Yeah, I, I chose as my number one resource uh, conservation, blue ocean. I didn't come out here for the business. I came out here because it was beautiful and we served and went to serve and whatever. I think we're too too business oriented, too money oriented. Uh, that's uh, and I think um, yeah the, the community to me the resource uh, conservation and search city community. All I hear is business. Where we just seem to be always chasing our tail for more money and then we build more things, we get more money, and then we need more police or whatever. And on the cultural arts, and I think I might, I think Mike alluded to it. I've been here for a long time, and I saw the city knock the Golden Bear down. I think it's about time we stopped talking about the Golden Bear. It was another, it was another generation. It's time to get rid of that. Then John, so Jessica, is it Jessica? Yeah, Jessica. Yeah. Sorry, Jessica. Um, I think it's kind of interesting, and maybe this is telling of where the city is changing that that Jay wasn't number one. Because if you think about it, that defines the rest of them. So if we if surf, if surf City community and the family feel and the small town is no longer a priority, then absolutely business becomes number one. Now I'm not saying business is number 10, but to me, I moved to Huntington Beach for the beach. <laughs> um, that's why most people move here. They move here because of the ocean. Um, I have a lot of jobs. I think I've listed this. I'm also a property manager here. So I deal with people moving to Huntington Beach. The first question I get asked, how close are you to the ocean and downtown? Yes, downtown always becomes a priority. I, it is funny how we focus on that. I think you were mentioning that earlier. Um, but that's why people move here. So if we want to maintain our surf city image, if we want to maintain the family identity that many of you have said, like keeping it a community, which makes open spaces our priority. If there are families here, those open spaces aren't going anywhere because the families want to be able to walk right behind their house and go to the local park. So I think we need to kind of think about what do we really want our home to be. Yes, business is super important, and it's a crappy place to move to if the sewers overflow and there's bad roads. But that first thing is what defines us as a city, is how, what image do we want to put off there? That's the only reason why I put that as number one. And I think for me, that guides everything else. So I'm going to fight for that one. So we're going to... John, and then Kim, and then we'll wrap it up and go to the next podium. So Jessica, well, but, uh, you came before me, but uh, I agree with her. I, I don't know if I called number one, but it was very high on my list. And I think it's important because it's what's different. So if I said Paris, 
when you think of the Eiffel Tower, I don't think a person here would think of something else, or maybe the Lord or something else, but you say Rome, you think of something, you say Lincoln Beach, you probably think of here. It's what makes us unique. Earlier someone said, hey, that list could be Fountain Valley. Um, it's part of the infrastructure, and it's part of the economic vitality is is what draws people here. So if you think of this, whether it's a resort destination, a place where people want to go for arts, um, where they want to spend their money, if you if you really put a priority behind the image and make a desire for people to come here, they'll spend the money, you'll have it, you can afford the infrastructure, I mean, it kind of goes on and on. So, so I think it's pretty important we're here in Huntington Beach, and we do have something that's unique over a lot of cities, including Manhattan and other, other coastal cities. We have the space for the parks. We have all those things. We need to be able to maintain them through an image. So so I don't know if I'd make it number one, but it would definitely be high on the list. It was high on my list um, because I think all those other things would follow. The business would follow. You know, I, I want my business here on Huntington Beach because of that image. Yeah. You know, taxes, you know, keep going. So. Higher than eight. Higher than that. Mm -hmm. Well, I wanted to just sort of take you back onto Jessica. Jay was number one for me as well. I, I don't know if that's because I'm a mom and we moved here because of the beach as well. But I also think that Jay, E, and I sort of play off each other and that if you have a, a strong surf city community, <coughs> strong identity to the ocean, you really value the open space and the recreation. And I find that the more that you're out in the ocean and the more that you're out in nature, you naturally want to preserve that opportunity. So I think the three of those are interlinked. And if we do make Jay a priority, the other two will follow. I, I think you're taking a lot. I'll take one last comment from Jeff. Go Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of come from a different angle that if you achieve A and you achieve C, the infrastructure and the mobility and access and the open space and you take care of public safety and resident services and resource conservation, you've already achieved, Jay, that if, if, if you can accomplish this, then I think that just goes with it, as far as Huntington Beach being a family-friendly city. But this is moving forward. We're already there. People already want to move there. So what do we have to prioritize of maintaining? It's not like we're a new city and we're, we're building up from the ground up. Then, yeah, things are a little differently prioritized. We're already an established city. We already have residents who've lived here for 50, 60 years, 70 years, you know. So, so you brought so, a good point, but think of Irvine, which has all the things you listed, probably in the order you listed. They don't have a beach. They're safe. They have yep. all the infrastructure. Safe so safe. Irvine is what you described without a beach. So there's nothing wrong with your point, but there's a difference between Irvine and Huntington Beach. And Irvine's safe, you know. It has its identity, residential, all that good stuff, business. It's also a lot more of a planned community than we went with Huntington Beach because for years it was a hodgepodge. It was just yeah, yeah. stuff going up all over and what have you, so they had a little bit. I, I understand yeah, what yeah. you're saying, Jeff, that they have an advantage because... Yeah, they planned it from day one. Foresight, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But my, 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 yeah, my point I'm trying to make was yeah. you, that's why. you accomplished that. That, 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 that gets done. If we, if you, you know, and you're yeah. saying, I think is what I hear you saying is, no, that's what we have to promote, Surf City. Absolutely. We've got to, to get make sure that to, to get, get, to get, get this, yeah. 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 I would end up with Irvine, which is great, but it doesn't have a beach, right? I just want to give you one example. I met the tamale guy last night. Sorry. It's okay. But I think this is really nice. I think this is so important. Okay. The tamale, the tamale guy. Um, they, they're from L.A. No, no. They, they're opening, you know that, um, that restaurant space next to Subway on TCH that's been six different restaurants in the last four years he chose to come to Huntington Beach because of the surf city image mm -hmm. and he's trying to open a tamale shop it's homemade tamales and they're actually trying to go for sustainable ocean friendly practices he mm -hmm. specifically chose that because we're surf city and we're by the pier right. is that your other job you're doing too <laughs> I <laughs> don't find a job oh, yeah, well, I'm poor and this is how I make money <laughs> So we're going to get around to next. Um, you are welcome to take time to go through your worksheet again if you'd like, or you can go straight to the remote, whatever works best for you. I highly recommend writing it down on the worksheet. It just gives you a double job. Well, no worksheet, you can take it. Yeah, I'm not doing this. You should put this online.
so people could. Uh, the presentation continue. ultimately will. I mean, no, I mean, yeah. what we're doing right here as a polling, that would be great. Not tamales, but <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really hot. Hot. Now I like to think about it. Now I know, so that's why I But it's at the same time, people will want to, like I've had people literally tell us this that they, you know, just with the, with the apartments and stuff, is they'll move from one to beach because they know it's so pretty. They want to go to Rock Valley and they want to get close to the beach because they want to get on to the beach. Services cost a lot of money to deliver, so are we are we doing enough already? It sounds like the group is kind of saying, yeah, we're doing enough already. I agree. 
Irish that thing, I, that was one of my major ones in, in the beginning. I felt that most people live in the city, right? We're all residents, and therefore we need to have these services from the young and old, and uh, we should do more for the young, we should do more for the old. In the middle. I, I mean, I see your point, but I, you know, for Pat, like I asked, like, what if I, what do I have to go to another city for? And what if I call City Hall? What don't they offer me? I mean, are like, I go to the library and use computers and get internet and check out computers. I have, if I was older, I have a senior center and probably will have a new one shortly. If I want to go play soccer or baseball or frisbee golf or go ride horses or go surfing um, or go fishing, fishing <laughs> and the, the scary pond. Um, so I, can, I, can go, I can go to the mall. I mean, I, there's all sorts of things that the city offers me. I have building permits. I can go do those. Or if I have a question, I can get a passport done at City Hall, which nobody else does. The only thing I think the city doesn't do is you can't get married at City Hall, which is because the county clerk or order wanted to do that. But other than that, I mean, I don't. I can't really think of anything else that the yeah. city. Can I, can I throw out one subject that hasn't been talked about at all? It's not on here anywhere, and it's a big problem that's growing. Is homelessness. Yeah. So where does that fit into our set of priorities? How are we going to deal with public that? Safety. Does that go under public safety, or does it go under services? Or does it, you know, yeah. Where does that fit, and does anyone think it's a problem? It is a problem. And in 2040, how big a problem will it be if we don't do something about it? Well, so, so first thing you have to ask yourself is, how would you solve that problem? Right? So a lot, you can solve that problem in lots of ways. You can ship people out. You can provide a place for them to stay. You can feed them. You can give them a job. Fifteen solutions, depending on what you pick as a solution, is how you solve that problem. So. And is that is that a, um, something that's just limited to Huntington Beach, or is that more of a countywide issue that maybe should be addressed? Or Beach City, if you're homeless, where are you going to go? Well, is it something that we work in conjunction with Newport Beach and Long Beach? Because as you know. Yeah. I think it's a bigger problem than just for Huntington. Yeah, I think it's possibly a county issue yeah. more than it is a city issue, but I think it affects the city, it Absolutely. affects us residents, and if we wait for the county to do something about it, it may never get solved. And, and there are a lot of proactive things. There's people talking about homelessness now, trying to come up with some innovative new ideas for you know, dealing with the, with the uh, mental health issues mm -hmm. and dealing with the, with the employment issues and the, you know, the social issues. So. so would that maybe fall under resident services where we could have some that's sort of mental health issue here yeah. in the city? That's kind of where I was going. So yeah. the only way to caution you is go look at Hawaii and see how they solve that problem. It's probably driven up the cost of the city significantly by trying to solve that problem. Because it's it's attracting people for the solutions. And the way you spend money on something you don't you, 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 you still have to address it. Uh, the issue is uh, what, what to do about it. And I think that that's going to be a major, uh, you know, concern of the city. Whether the city, whether the county's involved, the state is involved, you still better hear your people and their outrages, and uh, uh, you better decide whether you're going to spend the money or whether you're going to do something else. How you do? I think the city has a task force that's looking at that right now. The completion of the city. Oh, yeah. So uh, there's already a group similar to this that's uh, tackling that. So. Maybe some of their outcomes could be considered by this group. So, under that subject, I, I would be concerned to look at the trend, do some trend analysis. Public safety is, is trending down, which is, uh, I think, one of the uh, identities of Huntington Beach. It's a safe city. Um, so, something to think about in terms of a priority. Uh, it's part downtown of downtown after 11 on You know, it's, 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 yeah. I, 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 I feel pretty safe relative to a number of cities I've been in. Um, I've traveled this country, and at 11 o'clock on a Thursday, there's a few people that I, I think there's enough police presence. I mean, it's not perfect by any means, but. It was the last time we were downtown after 11 on Friday. I was going to say, I do not feel Friday. safe downtown. I was down there this week. Friday. I went to Washington, D.C., and they tell me uh -huh. you'd be like walking naked down the street. Five feet longer, I'll feel perfectly safe downtown. So do we, do we have any other thoughts or comments on the change from round one to round two or the prioritization we see in the round two? Well, good job, everybody, first of all. <laughs> um, I, I'm actually kind of yes, curious why I, you know, why I is so low. Um, when you look at what one, two, three, and four are, it's kind of opposite of having I so low. So I'm kind of curious um, how... How that happened? Well, maybe not so much two, but 
one, three, and four, um, those are all really connected to I. Um, so Jessica, if I was to answer that question, yeah. I see I kind of like I see morality or anything else. It's, it's what you believe in yourself. It's not mm -hmm. something the city would have to necessarily put resources. I believe someone said it kind of follows. I believe with the culture and with the safety and all that, I, I think it naturally happens. I don't think it's something the city needs to do for resource conservation. I think it's something people do. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, you can say we have a recycling program, we have blue trash cans, all that good stuff, but I think people do it because of the kind of culture that you have within the city. And so it happens yeah. automatically without... That, no, that, yeah. Uh, we have now. a comment over yes. here? Yeah, I'm not a member of the committee, but the city does um, consume resources as a city the city is a large corporation, and it consumes a lot of resources. So inherently, the infrastructure, the, what the city is doing, is is a major infrastructure. And it also, uh, with its policies, sets the groundwork. You know, you know, uh, by which, you know, everyone op operates. Uh, and you know, it has to do with what are electrical consumptions, you know, water's consumption, you know, all the things that we think of as resources. Uh, the, the way the decisions the city makes. Is going to is going to affect our consumption profile. Well, and with the sustainability, I know that terms, you know, unclear for some people, but I'm just going to use it because it's the most widely known. The sustainability industry is the fastest growing industry in the entire U.S. It's growing four times faster than any other industry. So if it's not a priority for us as a city when we're trying to say that we want to bring in businesses, and I'm just going off of what this says, I just think that's a little bit <coughs> contradictory. That's just my feeling. But it's growing for subsidy more than any the federal government yeah. backing it. So, so what happens if, you, if it changes and they stop subsidizing the solar panels, so the, the, that type of stuff? And you know, they, it, would it be the fastest growing industry? But it's not America? just the solar panels. I mean, well, no, the things. whole industry is subsidized because it's a priority right now, and so it's subsidized by tax dollars. So well, it's not a, a true company sitting there, you know, trying to. So, so exactly. farms, farms, farms and everything. Oil so. companies are subsidized. Yeah. Right. So it's also, you know, so it's the same thing. Right, but is it a trend or is it something like Yeah, it's long term it's because be what Obama forever. just passed, was it two days ago, with the, by 20... Yeah. CO2. So we can 30? Back to honey. <laughs> 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 but that is, but that is, if we're trying to say that is a growing trend, well, it is because it's going to be a nationwide Demand. Okay. Okay. So, so we have, uh, so Jay, I, I mean, I'm a little surprised at Jay. That was a very good pep talk on Jay. Um, <laughs> but my, my, the point is that, like, I tell people, and I was kind of, we were talking kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Start at the PCH, drive up Golden West, and tell me when you stop feeling like you're in Huntington Beach anymore. About Dallas. And then you feel you could be in Santa Ana at that point. Um, I mean, but, but I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to I mean the walls degrade, you lose the medians with palm trees in them, you lose this whole Huntington Beach feel right about Ellis. And so North Huntington Beach is just going to go through. I live in, I live in North, uh, West Fountain Huntington Valley, is what they call it. You live east of Beach in Huntington Valley. Um, so, yeah, so it's, it's that whole change in, in beach culture. And I don't know if Jay is more of a overlay on all of these things, but you know, do we have surfboards painted on the fire trucks? Do we have, you know, that kind of surf city feel across, I mean, do we continue that concept um, across the whole city itself as opposed to it being, because I just really feel that surf city is limited to the first 10 blocks of But it each. shouldn't be. You know, exactly. I, I, but to prioritize I that across the whole city. I have to disagree with you, Dan, having grown up in Garden Grove right. and taking the bus to the beach almost every day in the summertime, you can definitely feel the difference when you enter Huntington Beach. And I think the city has done a good job by of making, and it, it doesn't end at Dallas. It, uh, Huntington know, Beach has definitely a certain vibe to it, and it extends beyond just the 10 blocks. And, and again, this is my personal experience. Live in Garden Grove, live in Westminster. There's a vast difference. I mean, I, I look at it as from you know, Old Town Seal Beach to College Park East. They're completely different communities. They are completely different communities. And the same same way. I mean, I just I feel it as I drive through the city. I mean, not taking into, into account other cities, but within the city itself. I think he's getting at the surf city. Yeah, the surf, oh, the surf city concept. Not Huntington Beach, because I grew up in Santa Ana, and I agree with you. Yeah. you. Cross the threshold, you definitely understand you're in a, a nice city, a clean city, well-maintained city, but you don't have the surf city culture. Yeah. I think he's shooting. Dan, you need to learn to surf. 
Because it's not a planned community, that's the difference. When you get a planned community, it's all that's a big difference that I saw. So. You know, one thing you got to remember about uh, resource conservation talks about beach management. Now, we are a big city, and uh, if, there are, if there is indeed going to be uh, rising uh, water in the future, 20 years from now, you've got to be really concerned about resource conservation. Uh, we're not just talking about solar, you know, solar power and people's rooms. We're talking about the beach itself. So I think that has to be a concern for us that we want to keep our identity. Or our beach. I'm in front of the Yeah. Or you can share right in the middle of Westminster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So one last well, one. Super brief one. Um, just one more thing I would like to add about resource conservation. It can also be used as a means to economic growth once the resources start to become expensive, you become very efficient at using scarce resources. You can continue to go further. Great. So we're now for ready for round three, the final so round tonight. Final round. So you guys can take a, you know the drill, take some time, fill out your sheet, or go straight to the remote. Just getting you ready. We're not quite ready yet. Oh. Now we are.
surprises? I've been trying at this stage after voting and listing and what have you, I, I, I would be surprised if there's much change. Yeah. I mean, okay, about three rounds of this is sort of tends to stabilize. So we'll take, make sure we take pictures of that. We'll have this saved. It'll be available on the website, and then these will be summarized in your reading notes as well. Um, was this fun? So, so someone suggested uh, putting this you know, voting method on the web as part of that whole input, data input. I mean, this may be a fun exercise for, um, I don't know how you get people to get to, this, get to it, but uh, just what would you, you know, say the stuff we have here, just a little bit of uh, tidbits and prioritize one to ten just to kind of see if we can get more than 500 people. And, we, we actually, on our, um, on our website, um, have all of you taken the online survey on the website? Yes. Okay, so on the online, not to put you on the spot, but um, on that survey, it, it gives us these um, maybe a little bit differently, but it does, you have to prioritize what you think the top challenges are, what the top priorities are which is very similar to this. And so the, the survey is intended to kind of get at this. Right, and so this, this what we're going to do with this is ultimately that, that round three prioritization. When, when the Planning Commission and the City Council get this material, they're going to get it just the same way you get it. It'll be alphabetized, no priority given, but as part of our report to the Planning Commission and the Council, we're going to talk a little bit about where the DPAC priority lie and some of the things that illustrate those priorities drawn from this conversation. I have access to the meeting notes and, and all of that to be able to see what some of this discussion was and where it went. Um, don't know for sure whether the commission or the council will choose to prioritize it or leave it as everything equal, but I think that exercise of prioritizing this gave us some valuable discussion to help kind of further illustrate where this goes forward. So, thank you. Ed, I wanted to touch on Ed's comment about why are we prioritizing, and hopefully um, you all got to see from this discussion, right, different topics come out, um, different things that are of concern, um, just how the city balances the continuing what we need, and all of your discussion, and as you're getting to know one another, and um, one another's yeah, positions, okay. and what may raise to the top, yeah. That's all going to carry forward to when we get into policy discussions. And so um, hopefully it has been beneficial um, because it will take some time for you to all get to um, know how to move this forward. Okay. Yeah. Oh, unfortunately. No, I do need these all back. They're yeah. super expensive. You can just leave them on the desk. No, I think you can leave them here and work back on them. We do have one other item to cover. Yeah. Yeah. And that's our that's our next steps and a journey to the next meeting. So the first major thing we need to do is set that meeting date. And we've discussed a number of options with staff. And I believe our our desire would be to have GPAC meetings both in the month of August and the month of September. So we'll skip July, but we'd like to convene in August and in September. Um, and so the dates for August that are on the table are either the sixth, which is Wednesday, or the thirteenth, which is the second Wednesday. And then for September, it would be the 3rd, which is the first Wednesday, or the 10th, the second Wednesday. And I recall from our previous discussion a preference amongst this group for the first Wednesday of the month, but we definitely wanted to put that second Wednesday out there also as an alternative. You know, particularly that, that first Wednesday in, in September is the same week as Labor Day. So that is a consideration, perhaps, for some of you. <laughs> So any particular preferences for the 6th versus the 13th? <coughs> August. Sixth, please. Sixth. 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 August sixth it is. And then for September, any preferences the third versus the tenth? Tenth. 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 Okay, so the tenth, that would be the second Wednesday of September. So I've got this as August the sixth and September the tenth. And our next and our next steps. Um, you want to yes, well, there is a comment yeah, question regarding location. Um, so uh, it's not necessarily edible. It's annoying to you to have to move location. We try to have these in City Hall, 
I mean, it's convenient for, for staff, but um, there just wasn't the July 4th board meeting. And there was just no meeting rooms available in City Hall for the date that we had chosen. So because we're locking in the date, we have to just find a room that fits. So we'll generally try and have those meetings in City Hall so you always have the same place to go to. But on occasion, we get to see some of the other city facilities. Cool. And so our, in our next steps, I mean, this, this discussion has been about the vision and the guiding principles. That August discussion is taking it to the next step, which is you know, putting a little more detail in and moving this to the key issues that will be organized according to the general plan elements to give you an idea of where we're taking those guiding principles, how they're going to be spread out potentially in the general plan, and the issues that will be defined in each of those elements relative to these guiding principles that we've seen. So can, again, kind of taking another lurch forward in terms of detail. And then when we get together in September, we're going to begin discussing some of the key findings from the background research. So again, the, it's that process I mentioned earlier, to kind of matching up what we've heard in some of the comments from the public thus far with what we're seeing in the data and presenting to you um, some key highlights of the data that's been reviewed by the various task forces to date across all of those topics. So that's August the uh, September. And then I would say that we are going to be going to the Planning Commission in July for the study session on this topic of the vision. Yes, the 22nd yeah. of July on this topic. Um, and then we will um, All right. we'll go to the City Council in August. That will be the latter part of August after we've already had a, another um, yeah. meeting with you. Right. The, um, and we'll send a reminder right. out to all of our task force members and our GPAC um, about the study session. You know, the meetings are open to the public. You're welcome to come, uh, obviously. We're not requiring that you be there, um, but there is an opportunity for public comment um, at the study sessions for the Planning Commission as well as the City Council meeting. And so um, certainly come if you'd like to and at least, you know, hear the discussion. We'll report back to you. If, um, you know, we'll have section on that at our next June 10th meeting in terms of how the Planning Commission study session went. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Sure. Well, this is a good well, introduction to discuss. Please do leave these on the table. Did you cover my mother? Yes. Okay, thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.